Okay, um, so uh, a little bit quickly about myself. Uh, I'm Alex from Open Source Consulting, uh, previously at TLP. And I'm gonna be talking about vNodes and especially the discussions we've had lately on the dev mailing list uh, about the new default in Cassandra 4. Uh, so uh, just for vocabulary, uh, we usually use vNode as a synonym for token or token range. So if I talk about tokens, token ranges or vNodes, it's the same thing. So a long time ago, and still now in uh, some large installs, uh, Cassandra was deployed without vNodes and the ownership of tokens in the ring was fairly simple. So one node owns a single token range and that token range is replicated on the RF uh, minus one next nodes in the ring. Uh, so you have one of Datastax's uh, image here that uh, shows this. Uh, so token ownership is defined in the Cassandra YAML. So you specify the number of tokens and the initial token uh, in the case where you're using a single token, so without vNodes. Uh, what is good and bad in running a cluster without vNodes, because that's still widely done, especially on large clusters. So what's good is you get a perfect balance because you set the, the tokens uh, manually or they are computed by and you have some automation to uh, get a perfect balance. It gives you kind of fast repairs, although we'll see in the back that there are some drawbacks. Uh, you get decent uh, secondary index performance. Uh, you have a predictable uh, replication pattern and availability, so you know that every uh, contiguous three nodes share some replicas and it reduces the odds of data and availability so you can lose more nodes as you have less nodes sharing uh, tokens although once you uh, and that's going to be in the bad so I'll just wait until I get there uh, so uh, the bad is that you have to compute the tokens or you need some automation to compute it for you uh, Scaling is tough, so you either have to double the size of the cluster uh, each time you want to add nodes, or you'll need to move all data around to rebalance the cluster. Uh, when it comes to repair, you have a lot of overstreaming because you'll have one repair session per node, so per token range, and that creates an effect that is called overstreaming. Well, you will repair. Uh, tokens that didn't need to be repaired. And uh, that's because of uh, the Merkle tree resolution. I won't get into uh, too much specifics here. Uh, so you have more unavailability uh, in tokens mm -hmm. uh, when you have nodes down. Uh, so you have less odds of an availability, but if you have some, that'll impact more data uh, in the cluster. And bootstraps were said to be uh, taking longer because they involve only RF minus one nodes in the cluster. So uh, then came vNodes uh, in uh, Cassandra 1.2, I think. Uh, it was a contribution from a company called Akunu, which was bought by, um, by Apple lately. So here you have more than one token uh, per node and those token ranges will spread across uh, the token ring. So here you have three nodes with different colors and you see that they all, all own little bits uh, of the ring and they are all interleaved. So uh, to start a cluster with V nodes, you're gonna set the number of tokens. If you don't have too many tokens, you can set manually uh, the, the tokens in initial token. But let's say that uh, usually we let Cassandra uh, pick the tokens by itself. Uh, so the tokens are totally randomly computed during Bootstrap. So we're gonna have a random pick of 256 tokens when the node first starts and then it uh, joins uh, the cluster. 
So the bad with VNodes is repairs take longer because repair has to be split by token range uh, because two token ranges owned by the same node might be replicated on different nodes. So if we try to repair everything at once, we might end up repairing the whole cluster in just one go. So it's per token range. Uh, repairs can generate lots of tiny SS tables. You have bad two, uh, secondary index performance because if you don't specify a partition key in your uh, secondary index query, then it's gonna have to run the query once per vnode. You have unpredictable replication uh, and, and availability uh, because in a cluster with 256 vnodes per node, then all nodes are sharing tokens with all nodes. So if two nodes go down, you have partial unavailability. Uh, that is mitigated by racks, but I will leave that aside uh, as well. Uh, and if you use a low number of vnodes per node, then you'll get imbalances in token ownership. So the good thing, uh, automation, so tokens are computed by Cassandra, so you don't need to build automation nor compute tokens. You're free to scale as you wish, so you can add one node and still have a balanced cluster, uh, or you can double the size and it's pretty much the same. Uh, you don't have repair over streaming, uh, but uh, yeah, so no overstreaming, that's fixed by uh, vnodes and you have kind of faster bootstraps because it involves all the nodes uh, in the cluster. So some say that it was faster before, some say it's faster after, honestly, I don't know. Uh, and unavailability impacts less tokens. So why was... Uh, the number 256 picked by default, because statistically it was the number of vnodes where any cluster of any size was always balanced. And if you try to use high numbers, then you didn't get an improvement uh, on balance. So if you wanna go uh, lower and say use 16 vnodes, so this is uh, an extract of a node tool status uh, output from a customer we got last week. Uh, they lowered to 16 D nodes and you have some nodes with 2.6 terabytes of data on disk and others with 700 gigs. So that's pretty massive, uh, a pretty massive imbalance. So uh, in Cassandra 3.0 was added a new uh, token allegation algorithm, which was contributed by Datastacks. Uh, to use that algorithm, you have to define a key space uh, in a Cassandra YAML that will be used uh, to optimize uh, the balance uh, when picking the tokens. And that key space must be replicated as all of your other key spaces. So let's say the use is to have a replication factor of three, then you'll have to use a key space that has that replication factor of three so that the algorithm can kick in. Uh, so instead of uh, picking tokens randomly, it will split all the existing token ranges right in the middle and then select the best candidates out of these. So there's, there are some heuristics in there. It's not gonna try all the combinations, uh, but it does, uh, let's say, a good enough job. Um, so it allows to lower the number of vnodes, uh, but it's best effort and you have no magic here. Uh, so if you use a very low number of vnodes, so here's an example of four, a four node cluster with four vnodes each. If you add node E, it can only split for existing token ranges. So you're still gonna have like uh, node B, which seems to own uh, more data than the others. So you can't go too low with your number of vnodes. And uh, it only fixes balance by adding nodes. Okay, if you remove some nodes, then you might get back to uh, some imbalanced clusters. Yeah, removing nodes can break the balance. So uh, 
the good about the algo. Uh, it allows to num lower the number of vinos because there's some overhead as we've seen in repairs and other uh, parts of Cassandra. And you balance a cluster by adding nodes. Uh, what's less good, it's disabled by default and people just forget uh, about it all the time. So they spin up the cluster with a low number of Venos because they read in some blog posts that it's good, but they didn't enable uh, the algorithm. It requires to have an existing replicated key space, which sounds silly when you're spinning up a new cluster uh, or a new DC uh, because you have to spin up some nodes, then create the key space, replicate it, and then spin up the rest of the cluster. So that that's not very ops friendly. Uh, so yeah, removing nodes can create imbalances. Uh, the first RF nodes will still be random uh, nodes. So the, their tokens will be uh, picked randomly. Uh, the algorithm only kicks in once you've reached RF number of nodes. Uh, and imbalances, yeah, are still possible. So there's this assumption that the algorithm just works magically and uh, creates perfectly balanced uh, clusters all the time. It's not the case uh, as we've seen before. So uh, in Cassandra 4, there's gonna be an improvement, uh, which is that you don't have to specify a key space. You just need to specify a replication factor for which you want uh, the balance to be improved. So that's good. We're striking uh, the requires to have an existing replicated key space. So that's one less thing to worry about. Uh, there's been a discussion recently on picking a new default for Cassandra 4. So Netflix and Apple are pushing for for vnodes because uh, there was this paper from Netflix that showed that if you have 256 vnodes, then you could get 2.98 outages per century, per century, but with four vnodes, it's gonna be 0.35. That's an improvement, sure. Uh, so yeah, they have all graphs showing that per century, you're gonna get less outages. So data stacks apparently recommends eight, uh, which could be for the AC, I'm not sure. And apparently, allegedly, we recommended four in one of our uh, blog posts, which we did not. It was just used in a, as an example, although we had uh, one consultant that was very keen on pushing four, which he still does at Apple. Uh, so before the community dives into uh, picking four, uh, we ran some benchmarks uh, to see how balanced our clusters in Cassandra 4.0 using the new uh, setting. And you can see that when using four tokens, we, you can have widely uh, well imbalances still. So this shows that at the minimum, we had some nodes with somewhere around 60% ownership and up to 100%. And to get to a good balance with four tokens, you had to reach uh, 12 nodes at least in the cluster. Uh, with eight tokens, it got better, but still you had to go to around eight to nine nodes uh, to get a good balance. And 16 tokens was showing good improvements around six and seven uh, nodes. So, uh, these are the raw results of uh, the benchmarks. And remember the three Cs, so community. Community is made of a lot of small clusters. So we cannot decently pick a default that will create imbalances in clusters smaller than 12 nodes because you have a lot of those out there. Uh, so uh, we came to an agreement. It seems that it's gonna be lower to 16 and then the algorithm will be enabled by default. I'm almost done. Uh, so we've crossed the disabled by default. Uh, that's gonna be fixed in 4.0. Imbalances are still possible uh, and we need to keep that in mind. And that's it for me. <laughs>